here with Candy Hainsworth Designs and I am in the official classroom for the Sew It and Show workshops. Today we are talking about how to personalize this pot holder. Now this baking set was one of the most popular items sold at Candy and Hainsworth Designs this Christmas season and one of the most popular questions that I have gotten from people uh, whether they're in the embroidery industry or in the craft business they want to know how I have added the personalization and to be quite frank I simply turned it right side out and opened the seams and added the personalization but I'm going to do a demonstration on how that is done here's what you're going to need to achieve this you're going to need the pot holder you're going to need stabilizer now this is a tear away stabilizer however if you have a tear away sticky back stabilizer that would be better i don't have that so i will have to use an adhesive spray you're going to need clips if you don't have clips you can use pins however you got to keep in mind this oven mitten is a thick material because it has that um that um special material inside of it so it's thick so i find that the clips are best to use in this project you're going to need your embroidery machine with at least a four by four hoop okay so if you don't have uh, a multi-needle machine no worries you can use a single needle machine with a four by four hoop okay and if you have a sewing machine and embroidery machine combo then even better because you will need your sewing machine to close the pot holder, I'm sorry, the oven mitten once you are done with the embroidery. The most important item here is going to be your seam ripper. Okay, so let's get started on personalizing this oven mitten. Now before you get started, you want to first decide how you are going to personalize it. If you're going to personalize it for the right hand or if you're going to personalize it for the left hand. It would probably be better if you knew uh, what uh, the person was either right-handed or left-handed, but for the most part, we don't know that. So if you can find that out, that would be helpful. In this case, I am personalizing it on the right hand. To do that, I'm going to turn this wrong side out. I know in the description I probably said, or the intro I said, um, right side out but it's actually wrong side out and to do that you just you know just turn it wrong side out okay so I want to direct your attention to the tag now on your oven mitten the tag may be opposite or different from where my tag is located okay in this case if this was turned right side out the tag would be located on the left hand exposed part where the embroidery would be okay so that means that the embroidery will be done here so my tag would be here but in this case we're doing it on the right side so the tag is actually exposed now on your oven mitten the tag might actually be on the side okay now depending on if you think that you want to um sell this item or not if it's a gift or something like that then you probably don't have to re-add the tag but if you are selling the item you want to include the tag because it may have care instructions and so forth in the meantime you want to use a clip or a pin to remind you where the tag is so you know not to embroider in this area or you know that the tag is going to be there so if you're doing a left hand uh, embroidery and your tag is here you're going to have to add the clip somewhere on this so you know to add this tag after you remove it okay so now let's talk about removing these seams using your seam ripper okay you're going to take the seams apart between four four and a half no more than five inches okay so remember you're not actually hooping this meaning this is not going to be hooped with the base and then hoop with the top of the base you're just going to pretty much freehand this so you don't need to take the whole thing apart and you don't need to fight with your embroidery hoop trying to get this thick piece of item onto your hoop so once again I'm going to use the seam ripper to unseam or rip the seams of this oven mitten on this side and then rip the seams of the oven mitten on this side and I'm not going to uh, rip it no more than five inches. So if this is your first time doing this, you might want to take a little precaution by using a ruler and a marking tool, okay? So you're going to put your ruler here and then measure it out somewhere around four and a half and then mark, all right? And then do the same thing on the other, except you want to make sure that your mark 
equals up to that mark, okay? So you don't want to mark it down here. So from here to here, that's four, <clears throat> excuse me, that's four and a half inches, but from here to here is actually five inches, okay? And then, so this way, when you are putting it on the uh, embroidery hoop in the embroidery machine, you can either turn it or whichever way you're going to embroidery, you'll have equal amount of space that is hoopable, pretty much, okay? So now, I'm going to use my seam ripper, okay? Now, I'm gonna get a closer look up on this seam ripper for those of you who may not have used the seam ripper before, but if you sew, then I'm sure that you know what this is. All right, so this actually just has a point and a little blade that's in between there. So what happens is you're gonna put that point underneath the seam and then let the blade, by hooking it like that, you're gonna let the blade rip it, okay? And that looks like this. Okay, so you're gonna take your seam ripper. Now, this is very pointy, okay? You don't have to worry about that blade that's right there because it is protected, but this seam ripper can definitely run right into your finger if you are not um, safe. And let me tell you, it hurts, okay? So I'm just going to hold it below where I am pointing this, and I just wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna hold it, but I'm not gonna rip my seam because I don't wanna get stuck. And I'm gonna take my finger away Way. Now you see how the blade is actually under that, that uh, seam, and then I'm just going to let it rip, okay? And I'm going to do that all the way up here, opening it up, and I'm going to do the same thing all the way up here. So once again, if I can do that again, I'm just going to get this uh, seam ripper point under the seam, and then rip. So what happens is the seam goes under here where my finger is here and then that blade right there rips it. Okay, so I have opened it up okay according to where my marking points was okay and this is more than enough area to embroider okay so that's why if you have a 4x4 or a 5x7 doesn't matter what size hoop you have you can get this project done all right so I'm going to set this aside and now we are going to grab our embroidery hoops okay so this is the base and this is the stabilizer and this is the hoop okay so now once I get it on, okay, it's nice and tight already because I've been doing a lot of these, okay? If you can see the residue of, it really needs a bath, but these won't get a bath until after the Christmas season. But in the meantime, I'm going to take my spray. I'm going to spritz it. And see, so you don't have to worry about this if you have a sticky back stabilizer, okay? And then I am going to place this on. Now, the one thing I want to tell you is that you want to pay attention to this because uh, I like it to kind of just go across, so I'm not really worried about if it's going to be angled or not. So I'm just going to uh, place it down. I'm just going to press it onto that stabilizer where that adhesive is. Okay? And remember, I'm paying close attention to where my clip is because that is uh, going to ensure that I am embroidering on the right side, all right? And now what you wanna do is pin this part, tape this part, clip this part upward. Otherwise, it will get caught into your embroidery machine. What I need to show you. In the previous clip, I said that you need to pin this down, but you know what? If I was putting it on the embroidery machine like this, then yes, I need it to be pinned very well, and it is, so it doesn't get caught underneath the heads here. However, if you don't have a lot of clips or a lot of pins and so forth, you can really turn your embroidery hoop around, and so this way you don't have to worry about the excess part of it getting um, caught into the machine, okay? Now, the only thing I wanna tell you that if you're going to do it like that, like I'm going to do it like this so I don't have to worry about that, you wanna make sure that you rotate your embroidery design. Otherwise, it will be embroidered upside down. All right, so I'm going to rotate my design or my personalization completely. 
all right so this way i know that it's going to embroider on uh in the right direction that i wanted to embroider on and this particular machine i know that you know everyone's gonna say well candy i don't have that kind of machine but this particular machine for those of you who have been thinking about getting um, a 10 needle machine i do have a six needle machine but my six needle machine does not have this capability i want to see the position that this is going to be on so i can do that simply by touching that camera area and it's going to recognize where it's going to embroider so I'm going to direct your attention down here and all it's doing is scanning the embroidery location and then once it has it in its memory it's going to appear on the screen and it's going to show me where my embroidery is going to be. So if I don't like the position of where the embroidery is going to be, I can actually move it up, down, over, side to side, or whatever I want to do. So I'm just going to actually move it over just some. And I'm going to move it up just a tad bit, okay? And now I know where it's going to embroider. So I'm coming down to the final minute of this embroidery design. As you can see, it's under 5,000 stitches. It took 11 minutes to the embroider, and I am on my last minute, okay? And so hooping this is not hard at all, as you can see here. And you can hoop it if you have a 4x4 um, embroidery hoop, if you have a single head, if you have a multi-needle machine, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the embroidery part is done. And if any of you want to know, I've used a brush script font. And brush script font can either be purchased or it may even be inside of your machine's memory already, okay? And then this was a different kind of font um, that I used just to complement the, um, the brush script. I didn't want both of them to be in the brush script design. So now we are ready to put this back together. Okay, so we are finished with the embroidery and now it is time to take it off the hoop, okay, and then uh, sew it. So remember, we've used that um, tear away stabilizer so you can just tear it away, okay. And because we used the spray adhesive, as you can see, a little bit of the residue, it came off. All right, so we'll put the... Um, the uh, embroidery hoop aside. Okay, so now if you have pinned this area, you want to take all those pins out. And then after you've taken all of your pins out, you want to have your, uh, your sewing machine set up. And now today we are using the Brother JX2517, which is the official sewing machine for the Sew It and Show workshops. And people will ask, why do I always say that uh, when I am about to use a sewing machine? It's because I have a variety of sewing machines in my studio. And for the most part, this is the one that I use for my students. It's an excellent beginner sewing machine. If you are an embroidery business owner and you are thinking about just doing simple things like sewing seams ups and stuff, this is an excellent machine to start off with. It's not a toy. So I like it because it's easy enough for a five-year-old to use and it's not complicated, but it's going to get the job done and not break down on you, okay? And so... Moving forward, everyone knows that I like to put my tags in my items, okay? Now, generally, my tags would be here, but I don't want my tags sticking out of the product. So instead of folding it like so, can you see what I'm doing there? Is that little focused? Okay, instead of it folding it and putting it like this, I'm just going to make sure that it's actually inside of here, but matter of fact, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm going to make sure that it's here. So then when I'm sewing it, it's just going to be sewed right along so, okay? So once again, ideally, I would be putting it here, but I don't want it sticking outside of the, um, the pot hole, the oven mitten. And so I'm just going to hoop it like so. 
And I'm using clips to uh, pin this back together or to bind this back together, okay? And then on some pot holders or most pot holders, you'll have this little loop. So this one, I'm just going to just fold it back inward, okay? And then I'm going to take a clip. And this way when I sew it will include that loop okay and then I'm just gonna clip the other side right here and all we're going to do is sew a straight seam okay so those of you who are a little bit about a little bit nervous about sewing nope don't be at all because it's nothing to be nervous about and I'm gonna show you why so all we're gonna do pretty much is put the machine here the needle here and then just push it along and it's just going to sew a straight line okay so now this is going to be your base plate you're going to lift your presser foot up now this is your presser foot okay so you just lift it up and then your needle should be in its highest position as well okay so then I'm going to lift up the lever just to get my presser foot up just so I can get it onto the fabric okay and now if you are a little bit nervous about sewing a straight line you can actually take a marker and just draw a straight line like so okay so now I'm putting the presser foot down so it's pressed onto the fabric this is my needle I'm going to put the needle in place okay and now I'm going to take my first clip out because you don't want to sew over clips or pins and then I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to control this. But for the most part, it's just going to sew a straight line. See that? And then when I'm coming to my tag, now ideally I'm not used to holding my tag. So I really have to make sure that uh, it doesn't slip because this tag is satiny. So it's slipping right away from my fingers. But for the most part, I'm just sewing a straight line. Once I come to this clip, I want to make sure that I take the clip off. When I get to here now, I'm going to backstitch, even though I haven't come to the end. Um, backstitching is just stitching straight wood and then backwards. And what happens is it ties the thread into a knot. Lift the presser foot up, pull it, and then it has a little blade on the side. And because this is a thick material, I'm just going to run it over the sewing machine again. You want to make sure that your needle is in its highest position. Your presser foot is down. Your needle is back in place. And we're just going to do this again. And then I'll do it on the other side. And then we will be done. Okay, now, so before you turn it right sides out, you want to clip off all of these little loose threads, okay? And uh, even though the, uh, the person that's receiving this will not be turning this um, inside out, uh, for the most part, your fingers and your hands can feel these little threads, and you don't want, regardless to if it's a gift or if you are selling it, it's annoying, so you don't want that to uh, remain. So just cut all of those little threads off and then let's turn it right side out okay so I have completed uh, the uh, oven mitten and it is absolutely awesome and the only thing now I just have to uh, do the uh, pot holder and that's very easy and then I just have to put it together so I'm going to uh, just put it together like you see here using the elements and we're going to use that uh, turquoise flower I think that that would make this um, presentation really pop and for the most part it is quite simple to uh, take it apart uh, sew it back together with no problems as you can see here so if you would like to see how to put this together to make it look like this and this is all solid and it doesn't fall or anything like that I'm gonna post the link below but I just wanted to show you how to take the seams apart, embroider the item, put it back together, and it still have that nice, neat, and professional look that you want for your customers or your gift recipients. That's all for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment below. And you can always come and visit me 
at the Embroidery Boss Group on Facebook if you are an embroidery business owner or you are an embroidery hobbyist. All right, that's all for today. Thanks again for joining in, and I'll see you next time.